what are pure experiences? Experience is not clouded by ignorance. What is the ideal thing to do in a moment? Do that which is necessary. Actually, it is easier. Do not do that which is unnecessary. And that which is necessary will happen. And that which is which must happen ideally will happen. Stop doing that which is totally unnecessary. Ishri Ishwar Puri said, Consciousness always creates experiences opposite to our true nature so that we can enjoy or appreciate what we have. That's why we have suffering, pain and certainty in the world. Please throw some light on this. This is very poetic, poetic way of saying that the duality exists so that we can appreciate the positivity. The negativity exists so that we know the meaning of positivity. So why is there suffering so that we can know happiness? We can know happiness. Why is there pain so that we know the value of pleasure? So on. Without the darkness, you won't know the value of light. Without the bad food, you won't know the pleasure of eating good food. So that is the meaning here. There is some benefit, there is some use of negative experiences. You don't know what is bad, you will not recognize what is good. So if you get something which is good, yes, now you will appreciate what you got. Same thing about ignorance. If you all you have ignorance, you won't appreciate the value of knowledge. So ignorance is a way to get us to the knowledge and then see the value of it. And if this experience is not given, then the value will not be seen. So there can be opinions, you know, why is there no better way? <laughs> why can't we know the value of happiness without suffering and so on? You see right now, right here, it is like this. So accept it. There is no point in imagining things when they are not there. The experience is dual. It is by necessity. It cannot be anything. And the effect of duality is that there are opposites. So hopefully you got the answer. And his style is not so direct. He uses metaphors, stories and so on. But still it is very, very clear. It is more clear than any other teacher that I have found on the path of knowledge. Very clear. Muni is saying, Now everything is clear after having heard you and following your instructions. But most other gurus are cryptic. They hide more. <laughs> Everybody has their own style. Actually, the guru is never wrong. The... Fault is in our understanding. If we do not ask the correct questions, then we interpret the meanings without asking the real meaning and so on. They will teach you the same thing. Then you need to ask for clarity. Otherwise the Guru will assume that you don't want to know. They are actually cleaning up the crowd. Who wants to know? Like this fellow who came, I know nothing, but he wants to know by answering the questions, not by asking the questions. Immediately removed, not interested in knowing actually. Then he started arguing instead of following the instructions. So the gurus are looking for the right student. It looks like they are hiding but they are filtering. Who wants to know? Who has the curiosity? Just gives a hint. Just gives a hint and then looks in the crowd. Who, who wants to know more? Makes a cryptic statement and checks who will sit in my satsang and who will go away. There can be some gurus like this, they have this kind of style. Well, but some are very direct. And somehow I like those who simply say it without waiting. <laughs> Tell me what you know. And I am like that also. But not everybody is like this, yes. How can I be perfect student? Listen to the video on qualities of the seeker. Qualities of the seeker. It is also in the program. It has all the details of how a student should, should be. Graham is saying many times I thought you misunderstood me when I asked a question. Then but when I contemplated your answers, I found I had misunderstood myself. Change happened. Yes, it is, there is a possibility, you see. There is a possibility that there will be misunderstanding. But it gets cleared after a while. That is why I put so much stress on defining words. So that there is no misunderstanding. Should not use improper words. By improper, I mean the, the ones who are that are not defined in our terminology. And the secondly, I ask you to write precise questions, not uh, noodle soup of words. 
it causes misunderstanding immediately should be short and sweet look at the questions in the exams not more than one line how precise they are that will never cause mis misunderstanding and another thing is if you go step by step there won't be any misunderstanding what happens is people come here and start talking about the highest kind of philosophy in the world and when i ask where are you <laughs> i just joined the, today now there will be misunderstanding so the best way you know it is given in the gyan sutra series in hindi it's not yet made in english you see but the best way to approach a guru is with folded hands please teach me this and this precise and then let the guru do the judgment let the guru do the assessment from where the teaching must be started so the guru will usually ask these questions what do you do how much you earn you have a family dependents and also these things will be asked and like he said how to be perfect student if he is perfect he is immediately taken in otherwise he is sent back in the world come after 5 years something like this now because we are online i don't get this luxury to interview people hundreds thousands of people there i have only this much option give them whatever i know in as limit as short time as possible we don't have the luxury to choose the student so sometimes misunderstandings happen sometimes uh, a, a, sometimes a good student is also thrown away baby with the bath water is okay is fine you know we have limitations for being online so rahul is saying what is understanding it seems no understanding is final except the ultimate truth we never use the word understanding i have used this word only once in my blog where i tried to define it the definition was not so good so it was dropped it should be used only in informal way the word understanding what do we say knowledge so no knowledge is final except the ultimate truth it's all still not precise so you can say no knowledge is final except the knowledge of the self anyhow understanding a very poorly defined word what do you mean by it what is the definition of it knowing or something else knowing very well what so you know like we say i understand the subject means the thorough knowledge can I, i can answer anything or when when i say i understand this person so has been with the person for a long time that much i know from the usage of the word but uh, when you say i understand who am i no 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 what does that mean you can write a book on who am i so we don't use this kind of thing you know i understand that everything is illusion i don't know what you understand but, but when you say i know everything is an illusion then i can help you to go further to go beyond the illusion when you say i know who am i then i can tell you the practices and so on so the word knowing and knowledge has been precisely defined and that's what we use because understanding is very kind of broad word can be used for everything everybody will define their own words so yes there are people who have defined these words differently and there you should be very careful do not impose your meaning you should ask for the meaning of the words do not look them up in the dictionary no philosopher uses dictionary no guru will use a dictionary they simply make up the words why because they are not using the words to convey the knowledge they are using the words as a pointer stand in the real thing is always experience once you get the experience you can tag it with any word you want so all philosophical philosophical systems have their own terminology and those who are lost in terminology will never know they will remain ignorant you can say they will never understand and those who mix philosophies terminologies no hope so the key to knowledge is precision be precise choose a language choose a system stick to it till you get all of it then you are free to do whatever you want cook up your own after that but the key remains the same be precise keep one word for one thing if there are two words for one thing you need to simply say it's the same 
so on. This is not poetry. The path of knowledge has no poetry in it. It is not left to interpretation. You can see the Upanishads and all these scriptures of the path of knowledge. They are most like the instruction manual. This is like this. That is like that. If you say this, the meaning is this. The precision is too much. Paramjit is asking, can you say something about manifestation? Yes, that which you are witnessing is the manifestation. It is simply another word for the illusion. The illusion is the manifestation. That which is manifested is our experience. And now whatever can be said about the illusion can be said about manifestation. That is, it is false. You see, the individual is never lost. We simply realize that it was never there. So that which was never there will never get lost, will never be lost, will never be destroyed because it was not there. So the ignorance here is that the individual was real and then it was destroyed. No, there was no individual since the beginning. And how things were happening in the beginning, they will continue to happen now also. Simply because there is a realization that there is no individual does nothing to the existence. And there are a few more uh, um, problematic sentences like uh, the existence is doing something behind the back. No, it is not doing anything. There is no doer. Nobody is the doer. Not the individual, not the experiencer, not the existence. So absolutely nothing changes because there was no doer before also. This is the only realization. So who is taking the birth and who is dying and whose karmic, karmic things are these? Nobody's. And it was like this before also. And it is like this now also. It is all an illusion since the beginning. So no effect is there on anybody's life actually. The only thing is that ignorance is dropped. The ignorance is dropped which that which was considered as true has now become false. And the false continues as before. No change. So there is nothing to do. And those who are trying to do something, still some ignorance is remaining. Or those who already know it is false and so on. If they are trying to do something, desires are remaining. And if the desires are remaining, then they are not my desire. They can happen as usual. Interfering in the desires is also ignorance. That means you are doing something. So if it is happening, no problem. If there is a artificially induced thought that look, I don't have any desire, so these should not come. I should not do anything at all because I don't take birth and so on. So I will not take birth and so on. This is ignorance because if you don't take birth, you cannot stop the birth also. It is not yours. The experiencer does nothing. It is not taking the birth and it is not stopping the birth. So nothing remains to do. This is the knowledge.